So when we talk about the adenylation of glutamine synthetase, essentially we're talking about how we can regulate this glutamine synthetase. Glutamine synthetase is an enzyme that produces glutamine. So glutamine synthetase catalyzes the reaction from glutamate to glutamine. But first, it's important to understand how we even get that glutamate. That glutamate is coming from alpha-ketoglutarate. So alpha-ketoglutarate via an aminotransferase reaction, an uh, enzyme. So when this alpha-ketoglutarate gains that amino group, it becomes glutamate. Then when that glutamate gains an ammonia group, it becomes glutamine. So essentially, we need to gain two ammonia groups to get to glutamine. And we use ATP as that energy source, and we produce that phosphate and AMP. So this enzyme can be regulated because glutamine can actually be used to create other biological molecules. It can be utilized to create carbamoyl phosphate or histidine, tryptophan, AMP, CTP. So since it can go on to result in the production of other biological molecules, this enzyme needs to be regulated because sometimes we may need a lot of glutamine or we may need a little bit of glutamine. So we have to regulate it, and we regulate it through the adenylation. When this enzyme is adenylated, it will be inactive. So over here, let's say we have an active glutamine synthetase, and we don't need any more glutamine, so we must make it inactive. In order to make it inactive, we have to adenylate it. Well, how do we adenylate it? We need an AMP. How do we get AMP? We get it from ATP. So we take ATP, which is a triphosphate, and we just add AMP, which is monophosphate, to the glutamine synthetase, and we uh, produce pyrophosphate. This is adenylation. But what's the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction? It's AT, adenyltransferase. Adenyltransferase is bound to this protein, the P2 protein. So when this AT, adenyltransferase enzyme, is bound to that P2 enzyme, it's able to catalyze this reaction of going from active to inactive. But now let's say we're inactive, but we need it to be active again. Well, now we have to remove this AMP. We need to de-adenylate. How do we de-adenylate? Well, we take free inorganic phosphate, combine it with that AMP, and we lose ADP. So now we have one phosphate, one phosphate, two phosphate. But what enzyme are we using? It's the same enzyme, adenyltransferase. Adenyltransferase is once again bound to that P2, but this time the P2 has a UMP bound, so it has been uridenylated. But what causes this uridenylation of P2? Well, P2 can either be uh, just P2 on its own, or it can be uridenylated P2. This uridenylation uh, is similar to that adenylation we saw of glutamine synthetase. So we have UTP, the UMP is going to bind over here. Pyrophosphate is lost, similar to what we see right over here, ATP, AMP, pyrophosphate. But now, if we want to go from P2 to uh, P2 that's been uridenylated to P2, we simply remove this UMP and we use water in this case. This is uridenylation. This uh, reaction is carried out by an enzyme called UT. Remember how we just had AT, adenyl transferase? This is uridinyl transferase. So uridinyl transferase carries out this reaction. But what controls whether P2 will be uridenylated or not? P2 uridenylation is regulated by the enzyme. So this enzyme catalyzes this reaction in both directions. So it also must be regulated. So what controls UT? Well, UT can be regulated by this reaction right over here. If we have a lot of glutamine, we have a lot of glutamine, which means that we want to inactivate glutamine synthetase. Do we want P2 uridinylated? Or do we want P2, a P2 non uridinylated? Well, in order to make it inactive, we want to make sure P2 is non uridinylated. So we want this form. So when we have a lot of glutamine, it's actually going to 
come over here and it's going to prevent the uridinylation of P2. So it's going to inhibit this reaction over here where we're yielding P2 UMP. But let's say that we don't have a lot of glutamine and let's say instead that we have a lot of alpha ketoglutarate and a lot of atp eight a lot of atp and alpha ketoglutarate will signal to the ut enzyme that we need glutamine and if we need glutamine that means that this will favor and promote this reaction because this P2 bound to the UMP will lead to the active form of glutamine synthetase. So it all, in the end, depends on this reaction. Alpha-ketoglutarate, ATP, and glutamine will regulate that UT enzyme in different ways. If we have a lot of glutamine, the UT enzyme will uh, favor this phase because this P2 will result in the, inhi in the inhibition of glutamine synthetase. But if we have a lot of alpha-ketoglutarate and ammonia, then this UT enzyme will favor the P2 with UMP bound because this will result in the active form of glutamine synthetase. So dependent on P2, whether it's uridinylated or non-uridinylated, we get this result uh, ex exchange between inactive and active form of glutamine synthetase. So once again, when glutamine synthetase is adenylated, it's important to really note adenylation versus uridenylation. You can't mix this up. P2 is the one that's going to have uracil. Glutamine synthetase is going to have that adenine. When adenine is bound, AMP is bound, it's inactive. When there's no glutamine synthetase, when there's no AMP, that glutamine synthetase is active. So it's all controlled through alpha-ketoglutarate, ATP and glutamine via P2 uh, protein, UT enzyme, and AT enzyme. And that's how we regulate glutamine synthetase through adenylation and indirect uridenylation.